Hey friends, you've now conducted your UX research, you've been out into the field and got your findings. The next step is now to write up your findings and report them back to your wider team. This step is super important and just as important as conducting the research itself. To help you out, I've created a free Figma template to help you out writing up your findings. Be sure to go in the link in the description below to grab the free Figma template. If you're new here, my name's Rick Khan, a product designer working in London, and I create design videos, so be sure to subscribe for future videos and let's get started. Your UX research you've just conducted is only going to be useful if you share them out widely to your wider team. Knowledge sharing is super important. Share them with the developers, product owners, product managers, people from other teams. The more people that know about your findings, the better. And a great way of doing this is through live presentations and sharing them async after you've finished your presentation. And I'm gonna help you out with this. So let's jump straight into Figma, head into the link in the description below to grab the file and you should be able to get this UX research report template up. And the way I've created it is that all you have to do is insert your findings in and you can duplicate any of these slides as many times as you need to create your own deck. So it's going to be super easy for you to create your UX research report. So explaining the rationale of how this report works. So the first slide here is you've got your title slide and then the next up is the key findings. This for me is one of the most important slides that you want to put in, especially for async purposes. If someone only had 60 seconds to view your presentation, you want to make sure they can grasp the main research findings within that time frame. If you only had 60 seconds, what would you like to know? Put a comment down below and hopefully that helps you come up with a rationale of what you want to see here. Next up is the research aim. Hopefully this has already been conducted and you already know what the research aim was when you conducted the research. And here it's always nice for someone to understand the project team if you're reporting out to wider teams who was involved in the research. Just insert people's names and I've sorted them here alphabetically. And then we jump straight into research participants. It's always great to have a bit of information about who was the people you do was doing user interviews with or usability tests. If possible, it would be nice to have some pictures to make it more personal. And it would be nice to understand what was the criteria for the participants to conduct the research. For example, did they have to be delivery drivers? Did they have to own a vehicle? Did they have to, for example, be a certain age? It's always nice to include this rationale. And then how did the participants come about? Did you use an external agency where they recruited internally? All of this stuff's really useful, as well as the location and the date. If this was sent out globally, if you're working on a global team, it's nice to know where this research was conducted. In this case, it could have been conducted in London. And then jumping all the way into personas. So this should be really simple to create. Hopefully you've already got personas to insert in. If not, just add some information around the background of the participants, any information that you've done through the screening, you can add here. For example, do you know any of the goals or the ambitions, frustrations that you learned in the interviews, what tools they use? It helps people understand closer to what, who you as interviewing. The next slide I like to include some methodologies. Like a lot of teams might have different methodologies how they conduct their research. It can be super useful to understand your user research scripts you was using. I always include a link here. And how did you conduct the research? Was it done virtually? Was it done in person? Was it done inside a lab? It's always important to include your methodology so people understand how the research was conducted. Another slide that I think is a really nice touch and it adds a lot of value when you're presenting back to people or people that aren't familiar with the project is have some photos of the research. Are you able to take any photos or any photos that happened on the day? It can really add some more of a personal touch to your presentation. For example, here's some photos I took when I was doing some research in London. It just helps people get a closer feel to the actual product and the research itself. The next screens here I like to include is the screens that you've been tested. Some people might not have seen this new designs that you've been testing or doing a usability test on. You might not be testing any screens, so you don't have to include this 
slide here but if you are doing any screens it's always useful to show the latest designs that you was testing and include a prototype link as well if you was testing a prototype it's nice for people to be able to click through this in their own time when you send this off offline i use figma to create prototypes but you might be using envision so be sure to include the link and allow people to click through the prototype and here is a, a generic phone screen like research finding so you might want to duplicate this a few times but this is basically explaining the rationale and findings you've had about a certain screen for example you might be doing a usability test and you want to explain why some things worked really well or some things that didn't work well so having the phone screen there with the relevant screen can really help bring this to life and it allows people to understand what you're talking about and it's just a really nice, easy way to present this. I think one of the most important things to include in your research decks are quotes. Quotes can really bring it, things to life and allow people to actually understand without any bias what you're trying to explain. For example, if you want to bring your point across, always using research participants quotes can help you with this. You want to always include the source, the participant's name, and you wanna make sure that the quote's quite accurate as well. And quotes are a great way. I recommend adding more than one quote into your research deck because again, it helps explain and deliver what you're trying to say to your team. Having quotes can support your research findings. Here I've just included various styles for research findings. So you might just wanna include photos of the day and instead of having pictures of a phone, it's nice to change it up. For example, having images on the right here, or you might want to have an image on the left here. It's really important to talk about your findings and not to have any bias when you talk about your findings as well. Also, have you had any opportunities to improve a screen for a better use experience? Are there any opportunities that you found on the day? This is a great place to talk about this here. Here I've got a bit of a visual summary slide. So images again are a great way when you're presenting back so your findings. Maybe you wanna include three short snappy points. So you wanna basically have point one, point two, point three here and just summarize them in like one sentence on each image. And that can really help people understand and summarize something. For example, this could be pain points you want to talk about pain point one, pain point two, pain point three, and it allows people to understand what you're trying to say easily. You don't want to be, have too many words when you're presenting back findings. You want to keep people engaged as well. Here I've included some bar charts as well. Bar charts, again, like data to back up your findings is probably one of the best ways. So if you've been doing any usability tests, you might be um, capturing some scores of ease of use of uh, task failure, task completion. It's really important to add some data in some of your usability test findings or research findings if you have any data available. And I've created some bar charts for you to do this. So it's always nice to back up your findings with some data and it helps support and inform your decisions here. And then on the left here, we've got another bar chart style. Again, super important to have data to back up your findings. And another slide I'd like to include is unanswered questions. So what wasn't you able to answer this time when conducting your research? Because the chances are you'll, you'll have like maybe one hour, 45 minutes or 30 minutes, but you, you might actually discover things that you might need to ask next time like how you might have certain technical constraints that you wasn't able to test or there might just still be things that you might need to test next time and it's always important to note these down so that the rest of your team are aware of these and that they just don't get lost in the pipeline i always like to put this near nearer to the end of a presentation so that people are aware that we did were looking at this but we wasn't able to answer it this time around or we've got some questions that we that did come up this time and we need to test them next time around. So you've done all your research and you're presenting back your findings, but you're working on a product driven team. You need to make sure that you actually action some user stories from your work. Otherwise, a lot of your research is gonna go to waste unless you work with your team to prioritize what's the most important findings from this research, what needs to be actioned, is there anything that needs to be immediately addressed 
are there things that can be addressed in a longer term? It's important to work with your product managers, product owners, developers to get opinions on this as well. So when you conduct your research, you need to have these actions and outcomes. As a designer, I like to suggest what I see as important um, and what needs to be worked on next. And then I talk these through the rest of my team. And this is more of an optional slide concept of future work. So if you've done some research and you, and you might have come up with an idea whilst you were doing the research of how to solve a problem that you encountered. It might be, a, a, you might have like a few minutes or a few hours to mock up something really quick and you want to show your team, oh, this might be a direction we want to go to look into to solve this problem. So it's always nice to sometimes have a work in progress concept and show some future potential work to solve this. And the last slide here is just a simple thank you slide. And it's always important to ask questions at the end of a presentation. So hopefully going through this deck, it can allow you to create your own UX research report well, and hopefully it allows you to concentrate on making the findings. Like I mentioned earlier, you want to spend just as much time on the findings and report as you've done already conducting the research. You don't want this to go to waste. So you can get this template again, head into the link in the description below to grab that. And another thing I'd like to mention is you can change all the styles on this deck. So right now these are all inspired by suites with the color palettes here, but you can change them. So with the color styles here, we've got like marshmallow and then we've got candy floss, Wonka purple, raspberry bonbon and licorice. And you can change these to fit a style of a deck that you like. And then you can change the fonts here as well. And with the devices, if you want to use Android devices or other iPhones, you can change them here as well. So we've used variants in this deck. So you should be able to change, for example, if you want to change an iPhone here to a Google Pixel, that is possible. Same with the insights into the designs here. If you want to change these to Google, it works well. So that's another awesome thing that I've added to this and that's with the power of variants. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new and I hope you enjoy using this template. Be sure to comment down below what you thought of the template and like this video and be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.